report has dropped that reveals a major opportunity for the Toronto Raptors. As everyone knows, this team is currently undergoing a rebuild, a retool to the roster, and Bruce Brown is the most likely guy to get traded in the offseason. And the Sacramento Kings, a report has dropped that reveals they're pretty set up to be given their plans, given what they're planning on doing heading into the NBA draft, the perfect trade partner with the Toronto Raptors in terms of what the Raptors could net back to set up their franchise well for the future. So we'll break down this report, what the Raptors could realistically get from the Sacramento Kings, and whether or not it makes sense for both teams for a deal like this to go down. So lots of stuff to sink our teeth into. Let's dive straight into the first report as essentially the Kings intend to shop the number 13th overall pick along with future draft capital to aggressively hunt a win now piece. Harrison Barnes and Kevin Herter are two players who will likely be dangled in trade talks over the next month, and Sacramento wants to seriously compete within the midst of De'Aaron Fox and DeMontis Sabonis' prime years. And this makes complete sense for the Sacramento Kings. They look at DeMontis Sabonis as an asset that it was an all-NBA guy this season. They look at De'Aaron Fox as one of the top guards in the league, a rising star in Keegan Murray, and they want to put players around those guys that can help them compete in a loaded Western Conference. And the role players have not lived up to snuff. I mean, we can look at sort of the guys. Firstly, Kevin Herter this previous season really regressed in terms of where he was, you know, just a season prior. I mean, we look at the stats, 10 points per game, 3 rebounds, 2.6 assists, 36% from behind the 3-point line. Those are all significant dips from the previous year. That was about 15, you know, 4, and then shooting over 40% from the 3-point line. Again, still a guy that's just 26 years old and shot 42% on corner threes last season, but... Just really didn't live up to the the you know starting caliber two expectations for an upper echelon team in the Western Conference. And then the other guy that was named in those discussions was Harrison Barnes, who himself has kind of taken a step back in terms of uh, what he's able to provide. His makes more sense given his age and style of play. But Harrison Barnes averaged 12 points per game, three rebounds, 1.2 assists. Uh, shot's still 39% behind the three-point line, but at 32 years old, still, you know, not old and washed by any means, but isn't really providing the level. He's very inconsistent for that Kings roster, and it's the reason these two players are thrown into all these sort of trade discussions in terms of what people are bringing up. And we can also talk about their contracts. As Kevin Herter, he's under contract for two more seasons in regards to, uh, you know, decently sized money so if the kings are looking to bring in some assets maybe some free agents things like that in the future especially with keegan murray's extension you know contract coming up you know having him on the books for a while is a little bit concerning you know for their accounts and harrison barnes is in a similar boat a couple more seasons at close to 20 million dollars per year for role players that just haven't been living up to the expectations for the sacramento kings now what does this have to do with the Toronto Raptors? How could the Toronto Raptors could potentially come in and make one of these deals happen? Well, Bruce Brown by no means is one of those stars, those upper echelon types of guys, you know, that could change everything for the Sacramento Kings. But what he is, is a perfect complementary piece to what the Kings need, what their roster is sort of set up to do, because one, he's a win-now piece. Just a couple seasons ago, he was a crucial player on a championship winning team for the Denver Nuggets. And he provides what a dimension of that roster is missing for the Sacramento Kings team. Because one, he can play off of DeMontis Sabonis just like he played off Nikola Jokic in terms of a cutter. A guy that doesn't need the ball in his hands a ton to create some shots, to create some space. Because the Kings, they have no troubles on the offensive end. They are one of the league's best offenses for the past two years. But they struggled with kind of guys that... You know, it could be more utility pieces on the offensive end, you know, his cutters and stuff, but frankly, on the defensive end. And Bruce Brown is much more of a two way guy at this point in his career than a Kevin DeHerter, than a Harrison Barnes. Harrison Barnes is still solid on the defensive end, but we've seen a lot of Kings fans sort of question his ability to sort of stay at that level now at this point. So he has that track record. He has that sort of, uh, you know, reputation in the Western Conference as a guy that can come in, be on a good team, a good roster, and provide that sort of two way action for a team. And again, his stats aren't overwhelming himself. Bruce Brown's, right, essentially averaging uh, 11 points per game, four rebounds, you know, three assists, you know, in these types of things. His three point shooting is definitely a step below a uh, herder as well as a Harrison Barnes, but he brings more sort of on the defensive side. He brings more as just one of those utility role pieces that can affect winning, can affect that sort of championship presence. And I feel like that's something the Sacramento Kings would be interested in. Now, obviously, does this sort of mean that, you know, the Kings are willing to give up 
their draft pick this year. Kevin Herter and those types of assets for a Bruce Brown. No, that's not realistic. That's not a potential expectation. But what it means is if they strike out, if they sort of miss on one of the big targets that you know usually happens with all these rumors, everyone wants these star players, wants to swing for the fences, these home run moves right? They strike out. That's just how it goes, especially for a market like Sacramento. It's just kind of, no one's demanding a trade to, to sack, even though it's a nice city. I've been there and stuff, but similar to Toronto Raps. Not many teams are demanding trades. Players are demanding trades to those spots, but they strike out on that and they say, hey, we need a retool. We need a role player that makes more sense for our roster. That's a win now guy that, you know, could fit this team. Bruce Brown, as for all the reasons I just mentioned, makes a ton of sense for that Sacramento Kings roster. Now, does this mean we can, you know, make, get a ton of draft picks for a Bruce Brown, you know, get that sort of uh, first and nothing happening? That might be tough given how Bruce Brown played this previous season. He lost maybe a little bit of his trade value, but I wouldn't be shocked, especially with how people are talking about this year's NBA draft. If we could deal away, you know, Bruce Brown for an upgrade, you know, one of those, the player that the Sacramento Kings like the least, you know, on that sort of roster there, and then maybe our second round pick, and then trade up to 13th overall. That's a package, that's a deal I think makes a ton of sense. I mean, we just had reports and some speculation regarding uh, the Memphis Grizzlies just a couple weeks ago that there's continuing buzz that the Grizzlies are attempting to trade the number nine overall pick in the NBA lottery, whether it be for a win now veteran moving up in the draft, and uh, Memphis is actively looking around. Now there's more discussions, more chatter about Jakob Pertle being involved in one of those deals. He makes less sense for the Sacramento Kings just given the fact they have DeMontis Sabonis, why on earth would they want another center? But Bruce Brown is a dude that could be more val would be much more valuable to the Sacramento Kings than the Raptors roster because I still think he's a solid win now piece. He's a good basketball player, but when you have a roster filled with R.J. Barrett, Scotty Barnes, who aren't the greatest shooters in their own right, are more kind of a, well. RJ Barrett's a slasher, you know, finishing at the basket. Scotty Barnes can do it all, but the shooting was, you know, did wane off a little bit at the close last season. Then off the bench, we also have Grady Dick, who needs minutes. Gary Trent Jr., who you don't want to let that asset walk for nothing. Just a ton of guys that, you know, don't compliment Bruce Brown that well. Whereas with the Sacramento Kings, they have a ton of floor spacing, a ton of shooting, his cutting, his sort of basketball awareness, his ability to facilitate, you know, at that wing spot, along with this defense rebounding, all those types of things. I mean, he just makes a ton more sense on that Kings roster. So Masai Ujiri can sort of sell that and the Raptors get back some three-point shooting, you know, get back a Herder, get back a Barnes who make more sense on this Raptors roster. Heck, maybe even a straight-up deal for uh, Bruce Brown, for Kevin Herter, or one of these pieces just would make more sense because also gives the Sacramento Kings more flexibility, more options out there on the future, you know, for it to, to build in, to bring in some of those stars during this sort of De'Aaron Fox, DeMontis Sabonis window. So, Definitely keep an eye out for the Sacramento Kings as a potential trade target for a Bruce Brown deal. Just makes sense for both teams, in my opinion. It makes so much sense, especially, I, I won't be surprised. The Raptors could finesse some draft capital back in return in one of these packages. But let me know what you guys think about all this strong Raptors news, all this news around the NBA in the comment section down below. You guys are the best to make it as far. Subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't already. I'm signing out. Cheers.